Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Rachel. So today I wanted to talk about my selections for the Nebulas. Now, the Nebula Awards have, were back in May, they've already been decided, but I finally finished reading the nominations and I have my own opinions. The Nebulas are awards that are sponsored by the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers Association, or CIFWA. And then these awards are voted by members of CIFWA. And to be a member, to put it simply, you are a published writer or have done work in conjunction with it. If you're curious of more information, I do suggest that you go to their website. They spell it out very clearly what their requirements are to be what type of member. So the awards that are voted on go from January 1st to December 31st. Then all the books that have come out in, since January 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2020 will be voted on next year. And so the works are nominated and voted upon by members of CIFWA, like I said, and you cannot nominate your own work. I thought that was pretty interesting. So if you are the author, you can't nominate yourself. If you're the agent, you can't nominate one of your clients. If you're an editor, you can't nominate a work that you've worked on. I like that. I think it makes it more fair. Uh, so if you really enjoy a work, you're basically going, hey, I think this person deserves the award. Um, they do have reading lists that they have on their website and it's they're actually open to the public so you can see what has been nominated and these are suggestions that people have made going oh hey you you know everyone should read this because i think this should be a contender i take that back the reading list is something that they just do for each other to say hey i really enjoy this work you know try to get more people more eyes on a certain work but the nomination process actually runs from november 15th to february 15th I like that it gives a good month and a half for works that have come out in December to be read. And then also for an author to be considered for the award, they don't have to be a member of CIFWA. Just people who are voting and nominating are members of CIFWA. And like I said, from the reading list, those are open to the public so you can see what CIFWA members are suggesting to each other to read. So this video is about what I think should have won the 2019 Nebulous. And I'm not going to be bashing anything that did win. I most There's many books that I liked equally well, and it was really hard for me even to choose. Starting for the short story category, the nominations were Give the Family My Love by A.T. Greenblatt, The Dead and Their Uncontrollable Power by Karen Osborne, and Now His Lordship is Laughing by Shiv Ramdas, 10 excerpts from an annotated book biography on the cannibal women of Ratnabur Island by N Nibedita Sen, a catalog of storms by Fran Wilde, and How the Trick Was Done by A.C. Wilde. So, my favorite was The Dead and Their Uncontrollable Power by Karen Osborne. And it's been a long time since I've read this, but what I remember about it because still from this list, there's three stories I remember, and this is one of them. What I remember is it's a generation spaceship. They're heading to the planet, and there's like a royalty family, and then there's a grief or a memory keeper who keeps all the bad memories. And so whoever is ruler, uh, that... Everybody has nanites in their body, and so whoever is ruler, they're given all the good memories. And whoever is the grief keeper, they get all the bad memories. So every time someone did something wrong, um, anything bad goes to them. And this grief keeper, she is the last one, and she is not, you know, she's not happy. It's not, it's not fun to live like that. The current ruler is also not happy. They feel like they're missing context for things and when you only get all the good memories you don't understand why people made decisions. And so she actually seeks the grief keeper out and they decide that they need to share the memories equally. So I really enjoyed it. 
Now, the Nebula Award went to Give the Family My Love by A.T. Greenblatt. So that one was not, my choice was not the winner. For the novelette category, the nominations are A Strange Uncertain Light by G.V. Anderson, For He Can Creep by Siobhan Carroll, His Footsteps Through Darkness and Light by Mimi Mondell, The Blur in the Corner of Your Eye by Sarah Pinkster, Carpe Glitter by Kat Rambo, and the our Chronology of Love by Carolyn Yochum. And I might have pronounced some of these names wrong. I apologize if I did. Now, my favorite was The Blur in the Corner of Your Eye by Sarah Pinkster. And if I remember the story right, because again, it was almost a year ago that I read it, the main character, can, they can kind of sort of time travel. And the reason why I say kind of sort of, they can go forward and backwards in a timeline, but they're not actually there. They just, they can't actually interact with the people in the timeline. And so if you're there and you see kind of some like blurry shadow in off to the side, then you know that somebody has been time traveling and looking in on what's happened. And the Nebula Award went to Carpe Glitter by Cat Rambo. So I am 0 for 2. <laughs> for the novella category, the nominations are Anxiety is the Dizziness of Freedom by Ted Chang, The Haunting of Tramp Car 015 by P. Jelly Clark, This is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone, Her Silhouette Drawn in Water by Vilar Kaftan, the Deep by River Solomon with Debbie Diggs, William Houston, and Jonathan Snipes. Catfish Lullaby by A.C. Wise. Now my favorite was The Haunting of Tramcar 015 by P. Jelly Clark. And in this story, this it, it's kind of like a his, And this story is a historical fantasy set in Cairo. And it's set in the early 19, late 1800s, early 1900s, I forget exactly. Um, it's, it's near the time of the suffragette movement because this book, um, it's kind of the backdrop is women getting the vote in Cairo or in Egypt. Now, I don't know if they did at that time or point of time, but they do reference the suffragettes of England as well. The reason, so, I mean, it's, that's why I say it's kind of like historical fantasy because you're set in a historical period, but it's also altered. Well, it's historical because it's set in the past, but it's also an alternate history because it's, I don't think a 100% lines up with what has happened. And it's a fantasy because it has gin. Um, gin are real. They have been brought into our world and now are part of our society. And this is, a companion to A Dead Gen in Cairo that is on Tor.com, so it's easily available to read. And in this, two police investigators are called to investigate a ghost in a tram. Hence, the haunting of tram car 015. And honestly, I think this is one of my favorite books this year. And the Nebula Award went to This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. So, zero for three. Then, for the novel category, the nominations are Mark of Cain by Charles E. Gannon, The Ten Thousand Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow, A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin, Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Murr, and A Song for a New Day by Sarah Pinkster. Now this was the hardest one for me to choose. There were three that books that were very close. But my favorite out of those that I have out of those nominations, my favorite was Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Murr. I know the first three chapters I was kind of skeptical, but after I got past that 
It was a giant romp, and I loved it. I have not read Hair of the Ninth yet, just because I know that I'm going to be in somebody else's perspective, and I'm not quite ready to leave Gideon behind. And the Nebula Award went to A Song for a New Day by Sarah Pinkster. So, like I said, these... These are my opinions of what I think were the best. Again, I don't have anything against the ones that did win. Some were not my style, and some I enjoyed. I just didn't enjoy as much as my favorites. I'm curious if you have read any of these. What were your favorites, or what did you like? Or what would you have voted for? Thank you, and have a good day.